So welcome to the culture for today's video where we're going to expand on some topics that we've covered before. So there's a few links in the description box that if you haven't seen, I'd recommend you go and check them out. Uh, but today's video directly is going to talk about how to brace correctly uh, and efficiently for a big squat. Uh, just recently, I had an Instagram DM with somebody asking how they could improve some hip pain that they were experiencing with squatting. And the biggest rock that I saw was how she was actually inhaling before the squat. And I'm sure this is pretty common. It actually is very common. You see it quite a lot. Is that when people unrack the bar and set themselves in their squat stance, when they go to inhale, you get this big elevation of the trunk and elevation of the rib cage as, as the inhale occurs. And there's a few things at play that are going on here particularly some of the accessory muscles that are used for inhalation when the diaphragm is not in a position to actually do its job. And that is when the dome of the diaphragm actually flattens out to draw air in through a pressure, uh, a pressure imbalance between the outside air and the, what's inside the rib cage. Air draws into the rib cage and that's how we actually breathe through inhalation using the diaphragm. When the diaphragm is not in a position to work for a whole number of reasons, um, the accessory muscles are what is used to actually inhale that air. Uh, most notably, the SEM, so which attaches down on the sternum here, across here. We also have the scalenes, which attach, which attach to the upper ribs. And then also the pec minor, which attaches to the carcaroid process here on the scapula, and then attaches to some of the higher ribs. And what tends to happen is, when the diaphragm is not in a position to actually uh, inhale, when the diaphragm is not in a position to inhale, these supplementary muscles have to take over and actually elevate the rib cage in order to get air in. And this means there's a few things happening. Uh, the way that the human body works and the, and the joints of the human body actually create movement is there's a thing called opposition. And that is that two muscles at adjacent sides of a joint need to contract, one to offer stability of the joint and then the other one to actually offer and, and create movement of the joint. When the rib cage elevates excessively, that means that there's not really any opposition occurring from the, intra, uh, uh, the internal and external obliques down below the rib cage. In order for this entire rib cage to elevate and the ribs to externally rotate and to get air in from the supplementary muscles, it means that the core musculature on the, on the inferior side of the, the rib cage, so the internal and external obliques, aren't actually pinning the rib cage down and offering support for that rib cage because the rib cage is elevating so high, which means that we're not actually getting a very good core brace occurring from that inhalation uh, pattern. We're actually almost defeating the purpose of what the inhalation is trying to create and that is intra-abdominal pressure. We need co-contraction around all the core musculature that pin the ribs down. Uh, secondary to this is there's also a bias that the human body likes to do is particularly when we're moving heavy loads and that is extension bias and that is that we're trying to use the extensor tone on the backside of our body to actually move through the movements. So when the rib cage elevates, it also probably means that some of the posterior musculature on the spine is probably contracting and actually moving us into a position of extension. So that's what's happening when we breathe in. So it's very important that we control this extension again. And the way we do that is finding some ab tone, some rectus abdominis, some internal and external obliques to help fight that extension tone. Because we know when we move in extension, uh, particularly under heavy loads, we're probably going to face a few of the pretty standard powerlifting injuries. And that is lumbar, lumbar discomfort uh, and anterior hip pain when we're talking about the squat particularly. So it's very important that we actually breathe and brace correctly using diaphragmatic breathing. And for that, the 90-90 hip lift is by far the best drill that you can implement and, and put into your program uh, in order to teach yourself the motor control required to actually use the diaphragm for inhalation in order to create the most efficient intra-abdominal uh, intra pressure possible for a nice big solid brace of the core musculature. If you have any questions on anything in this video, actually, before I even say that, uh, we have a great video on the 99 hip lift, which will be in the description box below. So please go and check that out. If you're not already implementing it, 
implement that in your training, I can guarantee that a lot of these sort of niggles to do with the, the lower back and the hips will probably start to clear themselves out as a result of the improved core bracing that you'll receive in your big lifts. Uh, so now, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. You can find us and all of our links through the description box. Uh, as always, happy lifting and welcome to the culture. That was better. <laughs>